Hey guys, um, <clears throat> so let's look at our next assignment. Um, <clears throat> this is a pretty complicated assignment. Our, um, our next assignment is the IMRAD research report and we're gonna be starting it this week and it's gonna go through the rest of the semester. There will be a couple of minor assignments as you can see due throughout as well as a conference poster. And so it's not the only assignment left, but it is a major assignment that takes up many weeks. Um, you guys will be required to uh, complete this assignment either individually, or if you prefer, you can do um, in groups of two. So if you enjoyed the group work from our technical instructions and you wanna work with someone, um, it's up to you to, to pick who you wanna work with in our class. Um, and if you're uncertain, if, if you want to work with someone, but you don't know who, uh, email me. Say, hey, I want to work with someone. I don't care who or whatever. And if I get another email from another student, um, then I can put you guys together. Something like that. Um, <clears throat> but otherwise, maybe you there's someone in your group that work, you worked well with that you want to work well, work well continue to work with again. Anyway, so this is our... Um, it, it's going to take a couple of different... Um, videos and you guys are gonna have to read a bunch of text like I, you're, you guys are not going to understand the I'm rad R uh, report all at once in one video okay and so that's okay don't expect to um, <clears throat> let's watch a PowerPoint here we go all right move this out of the way move me out of the way all right okay so how do we start our I'm rad R research report first of all um, you guys should do the readings this, this week. It will help understand what the IMRAD is, but it's an acronym. It's pronounced IMRAD or I pronounce it IMRAD. A lot of people pronounce it MRAD, doesn't matter. Uh, stands for introduction, methods, results, and discussion, okay? Um, kind of messy over there, don't look back there. Um, uh, each section has its own genres, um, genre conventions. So you guys have probably heard me talk about genre a lot. Um, you've heard it talked about a lot in 150. Um, <clears throat> these are just requirements of a certain text, right? So the genre conventions, every, everything that you write is a genre. So like a grocery list that you write is a genre. If your mom said, hey, uh, you know, can you give me a grocery list? I'm going to the store. And you gave her a, an essay with a thesis and supporting ideas and uh, you cited your sources, she'd be like, what is this? Like, I wanted a grocery list. That's not, that, that breaks the genre conventions. The genre conventions of grocery list is lists of food, right? Uh, it's very simple. And so each section, the introduction, the methods, the results, and discussion, all have different genre conventions, okay? So they're almost like their own individual texts. Um, the whole process of the IMRAD is, is all about understanding concepts and solving problems. Um, now, genre conventions of the IMRAD research report um, change somewhat drastically depending on the school, the you know the purpose, the country, the document, your your discipline, um, <clears throat> and also your professor, what your professor wants. So even within your technical instruction technical and professional writing courses, different instructors might want slightly different things. And that's normal, okay? That's, you're gonna experience that your whole life, okay? Um, however, our report is a little bit um, different because we're not doing an IMRAD report, we're doing an IMRAD R. Um, and the R stands for recommendation. So introduction, methods, results, discussion, and recommendation. Um, the chapter, I believe, 18 of technical communication is all about the recommendation report. Um, or, yeah, yeah, recommendation report. Uh, a recommendation report has all the same sections, the IMRAD, but it also has other sections. So you also have to write the letter of transmittal, the executive summary, and the recommendations and other things, okay? Um, and so it's slightly different. And so we're doing a, a slightly different version here, okay? Again, don't, you don't have to memorize all of this right now. Uh, the nice thing about, one of the important parts about our course is taking you through the process. It's one thing for me to just say, this is what the IMRAD R is. 
it's another thing to know how to go through it. And so um, don't stress out too much about learning every concept right now. Um, you will figure it out over time. Fundamental to the IMRAD is primary research. In fact, it doesn't really, it can't really exist without it. Okay. And so we absolutely need primary research with an IMRAD report. Makes it a little bit complicated because you guys are second year students. You guys don't necessarily have a whole lot of um, experience in method, methods of research. Um, but what is primary research? Primary research, as explained by OWL, is as such, right? It's these, this is data that you're collecting yourself. Surveys, interviews, observations. Um, <clears throat> this is stuff that you are discovering. Okay. Secondary research then is research that someone else has done. So when you do a research report, let's say, let's say you want to figure out how to fix the fact that doors slam really hard when it's windy in, in you know, block 39. Um, and we want to come up with a you know, scientific and engineering based solution to this. Um, well, first of all, before we do our own primary research and, and figure out how to solve the problem, we have to do a lot of secondary research. Um, and research is a bit recursive in this way, is that we're constantly reading what other people have already done. And so if we figure out, if, we, if I wanna fix this door problem, first of all, I need to do research about doors and about how they function, right? And different types of doors. So I'm gonna be doing all of that research, looking at different types of doors, how they function. I'm gonna be looking at maybe how, how wind and air pressure affect doors opening and closing and possible uh, solutions that other people have used, okay? And that's the cool thing about this report is you can see what other people did. It's not, it's not cheating to see what other people did. If you want to do a report on how, um, <clears throat> uh, let's see, just one second. Okay, we're not there yet, all right. So if you wanna do a report on why parking is so expensive on campus, um, that has been researched extensively in the United States. Parking is way too expensive in the US. Um, I'm currently here in El Paso, Texas, where I went to my, gra my graduate school. Um, and parking was ridiculous. Like everyone complained about it. And even if you did buy parking, sometimes you had to then take a shuttle from that parking area to the actual, you know, it's just, it's ineffective. And so reading all of that is all of the secondary research. And then after you've done that, then you can step in and do your own primary research. Okay. Um, there are different types of primary research. And like I said, different places are going to have you do it different ways, but it's broken down into maybe three large categories, let's say, qualitative, quantitative, and mixed method. Um, we are going to be doing qualitative research. Okay, qualitative research, this is a huge oversimplification. Again, it's not necessarily completely vital to memorize all of these things, but just so you're aware, aware quantitative research is a little bit more about solving problem like solving problems in big large ways and it, and it kind of you can apply your results to large quantities of people qualitative is about like small populations about lived experience um about people's own um you know um experience yeah and both are equally important in different ways so if i want to if i'm testing some water because some people are dying in astana right and um, I'm testing some water and I discover that there's bacteria in the water that causes death. Um, you know, we can probably count that as quantitative uh, depending on our methods, but we can, we can count that as quantitative usually um, because it's like nobody should consume this bacteria, right? Qualitative might be more like um, asking one student what it is like for them to have to pay so much money uh, for parking, right? Asking 10 students what it's like and what does that mean? That doesn't mean that 100 people will agree, but those 10 people will, okay? Mixed method is something in between. So with primary research, there's a lot of different methods of, of researching. Um, for our class, we're going to stick to survey, observation, and interviews, okay? Um, possibly some analysis. We'll talk about that later. Um, but most of you are going to be doing surveys, um, observations, and interviews. Um, why won't we be doing more heavily scientific research for a technical writing course with a lot of engineers in it? Well, that isn't my job. Um, my job as a, as, a, um, as a writing instructor is to teach you the writing. Now, with an IMRAD, I can't teach you the IMRAD without doing primary research. And so we've 
hit this kind of issue of like, oh, well, I have to teach you this, but I can't teach you methods because you have to learn those methods in your own disciplines. If you're an engineer, you'll learn it in your engineering classes. If you're a computer scientist, you'll learn it there. Um, if you're in economics, you're going to learn it there. And so we're keeping our research to qualitative research. It's still important. It still matters. But what your goal is here is learning how to write the IMRAD. If you take this seriously and if you learn all of these things, then when you go into your higher level classes where you are doing more important research, you'll know how to do it. Okay. All right, Homer Simpson, where do we start here? Um, so I have done through this process multiple times. And so I'm going to try to get you guys to understand the, the beginning from the end here. Okay. So let's say you have an interest in astrophysics. You, and you might recognize this example if you guys read the chapters. Um, you want to research a massive proton star, radiation pressure, right? And why they don't collapse. This is, I just made this stuff up, okay? Why don't they collapse upon themselves with their own radiation pressure? Can we do that in our class? No, we can't, right? First of all, we might not know much about astrophysics. We, we don't have the, the tools, the gear, right? This, is, this would be like more qualitative, very unique to the discipline specific stuff with like fancy equipment. Again, my goal isn't to teach you any of those things. My goal is to teach you the writing process, okay? Um, all right, again, as I said, all right, that's the, this is the purpose, all right? We're learning the prop process of the IMRAD. We're learning the genre conventions and then the proper stylistics of each section, okay? Sorry, I'm moving my nose a lot. Okay. Picking a topic. All right, so what topics can you pick? So I want, so this will be focused around a problem and I'm gonna explain that a little bit more, but we're using the problem solving model, which is an important part of technical uh, writing um, is solving problems. A lot of technical writing solves problems. Okay, so we're focusing on that, but you're also gonna have a research question. It can be very connected to your problem or it doesn't have to be, I'll explain later. But it should also be something to do with NU, Astana, if you live in Astana, or the city that you live in, or the community you live in. So I want it to be focused on issues here, okay? Um, I don't want it to be focused on solving problems somewhere else. And we kind of need it to be focused on here because your primary research will work better if you're focused on here, on things going on here. You just have to make sure that whatever you research, um, you can discover something through um, our basic qualitative research methods, survey, uh, observations, interviews, okay? So like I said, the astrophysics example isn't really going to work, right? Just because we don't have the, we don't have the ability to do that, okay? Um, all right, so I want you guys to pick something interesting um, that you're interested in personally. Now, remember back in week two, we did that email where you guys wrote a pro about a problem. If you want, you can pick that problem. If you liked that problem that you picked back then, um, start with that. But I really want you to find something that, you know, as much as you can, you know, it might not be as exciting as um, watching Netflix or whatever, but I want you to pick something that's somewhat interesting, okay? To you, not to me, all right? It should be interesting to you. Um, it can be connected to your discipline if you want. If you're an engineer, it can be something focused on engineering, some engineering problem in your city or on campus or, you know, with our online teaching or, um, you know, it, it's up to you, but it doesn't have to be connected to your discipline. If you're like, I'm an engineer, but I'm sick of all of this engineering stuff. I want to do some research on, you know, something that has nothing to do with it, like a social issue. Then you can focus on a social issue if you want. Okay. Um, but you want to start thinking about all the different problems that exist, um, right, wrote, right here. I wrote on campus, but maybe it could be helpful to make a list, just make a big old list of all of the different things, all of the different problems that you can think of that exist in your city, um, with, um, our, with NU, with Astana, with online teaching, with Kazakhstan. Um, it can be focused on, you know, yeah, social issues, environmental issues, like it's, it's up to you on what concept you want to focus on. It can be a, if you're a computer scientist, it can be a, it can be something focused on, on computers and IT. Um, 
It's completely up to you. Okay. Pick something that you are interested in. This is from, oh shoot. Do I have the chapter? I don't. Oh, well it's chapter 18. I believe it's the uh, recommendation report chapter. I stole this a uh, little graphic. This is the problem solving model. It is absolutely vital that you use this model. Okay. This entire report is based around this model. Um, and this is slightly, maybe the, one of the bigger differences from the IMRAD to the IMRAD R. Okay. So this is more recommendation report focused here. And so what we're doing is we're starting with a problem. Don't start with a question yet. Don't start with a solution. Um, so for example, you might think I hate online teaching. I want it to all be synchronous, right? I hate synchro asynchronous. You might think I don't like asynchronous. Or maybe you just think online teaching is not effective. It should be in person. And so already in your mind, you're completely biased by saying it should be in person. Don't do that. Okay. That is that in that method, you're already having the solution in your mind. Now you might have ideas of what the solution is, right? If your if your problem that you pick is student stress, student stress is a problem, right? You think that you might think in your mind that um, a reading week before finals, you know, a week break before finals to study could be a good solution, but don't think that as your final solution yet. Okay. Cause you need to be open-minded. A good researcher is open-minded and it's about starting with a problem and being open-minded to go and discover multiple solutions. Okay. And so let's take a very superficial example. Okay. My TV's broken. That's the problem. My TV broke. Okay. And I need a new TV. So second step, establish criteria for responding to the problem. Um, so um, criteria, what are my criteria? Well, I want the TV to be 4k. All right. Um, I want it to be at least 60 frames um, or 60 Hertz. Is it 60 Hertz, 90 Hertz, maybe 90 Hertz. Um, I would like it to be a smart TV uh, and size, maybe like at least 40 inches, but um, you know, it doesn't need to be bigger than 60. Um, and also price price is a, you know, I can't spend more than a thousand dollars. So maybe those are my criteria. Um, Criteria for healthy renewable energies would be, you know, price, right? It would be like the environmental impact, low environmental impact. Um, it might be um, uh, the like ease of, of building it. Like, you know, maybe it's easier, easy to enact. Um, um, you might have one criteria that it needs to be somewhat um, popular among um, like Kazakh community culture. You know, things like that. So you want to think, um, and this isn't something that you just create. You need to discover, you need to, this is where all a lot of the secondary research is. So once you figure out what your problem is, student stress, you know, for example, then you're going to just do a ton of research about on student stress, figure out what are the issues, what are the problems, um, what type of things do you think you need in order to fix this problem. And so it's a slow process of discovering all of these things, okay? And so once you figure out your criteria, then you're going to think about the options. What are the actual possible solutions? Okay. And so, you know, let's take my TV example. I might then go to um, wild berries and look up all the different TVs and put in all my filtering options, you know, like, okay, it has to be this price 4k. And that's going to come up with like, let's say five choices. Now you need at least three options. Okay. I don't want anyone saying I only found one option or I only found two options. You need at least three potential solutions. Okay. When I say option here, I mean either option or solution to your problem. Okay. That's what we're doing. We're discovering a problem. We're researching that problem, both with secondary and primary, and then we're producing a, um, a recommendation. Um, and so here you're going to pick, um, you know, at least three uh, solutions. You probably don't need more than five or six, um, depending on your topic. Um, and so I might come up with like four different TVs, you know, it's like, oh, here we have the Samsung one, the LG one, and the Acer one, and they all fit my criteria in different ways. You know, the, the Samsung maybe is the most, the best priced, you know, so maybe it's the cheapest. And so that one's going to get a good score on there. Okay. 
And what we have, let's see, do I have this on my PowerPoint? Oh, I don't. You know what, let's, uh, let's quickly Google it here. So I wanna show you guys um, what we are creating here. Um, decision, so we're gonna be creating what's called a decision matrix, okay? Um, and I will show you an example of decision matrix here. Let me share my screen with y'all. All right, so let's look at an example. Um, yeah, I'm sure they'll pop up here. So, uh, you know, I'm just pulling these up, so they might not be perfect, but this will give you a basic sense of, of what a decision matrix will look like. Over here, we have, um, um, they're, they're the, the problem is that they need a location for their retreat. They, they don't have a location, right? And so they're looking at, um, three different places. They're looking at New York, Colorado, and France. Um, and their criteria is cost, things to do, ease of travel, and then they're giving it a final score. Now, there's a few different ways to do this. Our textbook has a few different ways. Again, we'll look at this in detail later. It's not wildly important that you, that you understand it perfectly now. Um, but that's what we are creating right there, okay? Um, and so after you figure out those options, then you're going to study each one according to those options and give them scores and rate them. Um, again, it's not just your opinion here. I can't have it be just your opinion. Part of it will be, but it needs to be based off of your secondary and your primary research. This is what we like to call triangulation of data. Um, so the more ways that you can pin this down through secondary research, through primary research, you're doing what's called triangulating your data, which means you're making your, your results more accurate. And so we wanna make it as accurate as possible, um, even if it is only qualitative research, um, it's still important to, to triangulate your data, okay? You'll eventually draw conclusions and formulate a recommendation. So at the end, you'll see that, okay, this TV clearly scored the most, and so this is the recommendation I'm gonna offer. You are writing this recommendation report, this IMRAD R report, uh, to president, um, well, actually, if you were on campus, I would say the president of, um, President Katsu, um, um, is that his first name or last name? Anyway, you would be writing it to him. But because y'all are across the country, I'll let you guys decide who you want to write it to. So say you're writing, say you're dealing with like a problem of like road flooding. Like there's a lot of, lot of uh, flooding in your city that you live in. Well, you could be writing this to the city planner, right? Research who the city planner is in your city um, and write it for them. Okay, and pretend that, that they are going to be the one reading it. So, um, secondary research. This is one of the hardest things for students. Online learning, I realize, is difficult because you guys are all self-guided. I'm not there telling you, hey, you have to do this, right? It's all on you. Secondary research is going to make this a lot harder, okay? This is, secondary research is hard for students even when we are in class. But why is it hard? Because it's slow and boring, right? You're just sitting and reading. You have to open up really boring essays and, and research, and you have to read about, you know, air pressure and doors and whatever you're researching, right? That's why I want it to be something that's interesting to you. If you can find something that's interesting to you, then doing the secondary research will be a lot more engaging. But I just, it's constantly, you're constantly been doing research, okay, or secondary research. You're going to be constantly, even up until the end, you're going to be doing secondary research. So it's kind of something that happens throughout the whole process. And it's, like I said, that's why it's recursive, okay? Um, once you've conducted enough secondary research, um, and this weekend you're actually going to have to turn in a proposal of what you want to do. You're going to have to um, tell me a few different things about your, your topic. I'll, I'll explain what I require with that, with that memo proposal. But um, you're gonna have to start doing research enough to understand the concepts, and then you'll start primary research. Um, and this is going to, like I said, either be survey, observation, or interview. Um, we're gonna go into primary research in a different video, okay? But eventually at the end of this process, you're going to, um, figure out some kind of solution to the problem, okay? Um, I'm not really sure about this example here. Let's see, ABB, oh, we didn't talk about ABB actually, so we won't worry about that. But anyway, that's kind of the overview. I think that's it, right? Yeah, so um, 
let's stop sharing here. All right. So that's the basic overview of the IMRAD R report. Um, like I said, it's all about coming up with a problem and then finding a solution and doing it in a meth meth um, certain um, methodology. For us, we're using the problem solving model. We're using triangulation of data and we're using decision matrices um, along with primary and secondary research, okay? Um, stay tuned, I'm gonna be making a bunch of videos on the IMRAD and um, uh, this week, um, hopefully. <laughs> and um, as always, let me know if you guys have any questions. As always, I'm always available um, on, on Zoom to you know, do a, a meeting if you need to or available via email. One participant who's in, oh, it's just me. Okay, all right.